A year of tragedy and a string of mass shootings across the nation. Another community torn apart, more hearts broken. Now the debate shifts to college campuses. The idea that if there are more students walking around this mall with guns will make anyone safer is just nonsense. And a new state law allowing guns in classrooms. Some law-abiding CHL licensed carrier will defend themselves against some terrorist assailant or mentally disturbed person on one of our college campuses. Hello and welcome to a special edition of State of Texas In Depth. I'm Josh Hinkle, joining you from the University of Texas at Austin. Some say it will help protect students. Others say it will only create more danger. Regardless, starting August 1st, you will have the right to enter college classrooms in Texas armed. That date also marks the 50 year anniversary of a dark moment here at UT when a student began firing from up there in the UT Tower, raining bullets and terror onto this campus. Survivors of the massacre testified before state lawmakers who eventually passed the campus carry bill last legislative session. The new law requires public universities to allow licensed concealed handguns on campus. Private universities can opt out of the law and a handful already have. Public schools have some leeway though to carve out gun-free zones. I think it would just create like a bad like atmosphere, like a sense of like being unsafe. I feel that it falls under our constitutional right and I don't want the government, the Texas government, to strip me of that right. Some supporters of the measure have protested the gun-free zone portion of the law. Without a gun in those areas, they say no one could stop a shooter. Creating this patchwork of where you can and can't take it into an office, I think is going to be kind of confusing for students. It kind of sucks because it's the lethal unknown, potentially, and that would, that's what makes it more scary. We now have clarity on some of those gun-free zones here at UT. License holders can carry in dorm common areas, but not in the dorm rooms. Regents also decided to let professors ban guns from their personal offices, but some professors filed a lawsuit in federal court because they can't make the same decision over their classrooms. They plan to seek a temporary injunction to stop the law altogether. Guns were allowed on campus before this law, but only in parking lots and on sidewalks now they can go into buildings. And even though Texas also recently made it legal for permit holders to carry their handguns in the open, they still have to be concealed while on campus. As the law takes effect, it certainly has brought out some strong opinions. And as KXAN's Phil Prazen shows us, some of those opinions were not included in final policies. It's just unfair that we're all just kind of blindsided. We're like, the whole university was like a deer in the headlights regarding this Senate bill. Ana Lopez will be a sophomore this August. She was one of many who gave their input on campus carry, and she feared guns in classrooms. That's like target practice for somebody who's angry with their professors or just having a bad mental health day. After SB 11 passed, UT Austin held two public forums where more than 75 people spoke and had an online survey where thousands participated. The vast majority wanted as many restrictions as possible. One parent felt dorms, classrooms, and other locations should be gun-free zones. Another wrote they were terrified of non-law enforcement folks carrying guns into libraries, dorms, and classrooms. But the university did not tally up those suggestions. So over the past few weeks, I've been looking through these comments, and I wanted to know why they didn't do a statistical analysis of these comments, and if any of them made it into the final policy. Law professor Stephen Good led the working group. He told me by phone that doing a data breakdown wasn't part of the job. They were looking for guidance on what to recommend to the president as a policy. He did say the comments influenced them to ban licensed carriers from having a round in the chamber. The Board of Regents later overruled that. And the masses of comments about banning guns in the individual dorm rooms did make it into the final policy. Not just parents of current students, but parents of prospective students. Parents who said, I won't let my child come to UT if there are guns in the dorm. But for allowing guns in classrooms, the working group said the new law forced their hand. Phil Prazen, KXAN News. And the reality is there would probably be more accidents and more suicides if there were greater access to guns. A survivor of the 1966 UT shooting recalls that tragic day and why she's spoken out against the campus carry law at the Capitol. 
Plus, we speak with a Texas congressman with a unique perspective as a student during that shooting. Next on this special edition of State of Texas In Depth. A day of terror in 1966, unprecedented in Texas and the country. The day Charles Whitman murdered his wife and mother before turning his sights on the University of Texas. There is a sniper on the University Tower firing at will. With a rifle, a shotgun, and other weapons, he climbed UT's tower and continued to kill. In all, 16 people. We were walking across and I felt like I stepped on a, an electrical line because it was such a huge jolt. UT student Claire James was eight months pregnant. She and her boyfriend were walking by the UT tower when the rampage began. I had no idea I was shot or where I was shot. And Tom reached out and said, baby, what's wrong? And then uh, he was shot right away in the neck. He died instantly. Claire James and other survivors have worked for years to bring a memorial here to the Turtle Pond on the UT campus to remember that day. They will finally dedicate it on August 1st, exactly 50 years since that shooting, and also the day a controversial law takes effect in Texas. James was among many who testified against the campus carry bill in recent legislative sessions. Now it only adds to the debate as mass shootings continue happening across the nation. In just the last few years alone, gunmen opened fire inside an elementary school in Connecticut, a movie theater in Colorado, a South Carolina church, a California workplace, a nightclub in Florida, and in recent weeks have killed police on the streets of Dallas and Baton Rouge. Each deadly event led to outrage, but not much change in one aspect, gun policy. Not next year, but now, today. And there is a reckoning coming. This isn't trying to come up with a solution to a problem. This is trying to get attention. While America was sleeping, they snuck out of Washington in the dark of night and left this business unfinished. And there's no specific ask of a bill that they would support. We're supposed to make one up. You must never, ever give up or give in or give out. Congress left Washington this month without passing any gun limitations. Even a bill to delay the sale of guns to people on the terrorist no-fly list couldn't get through both chambers. It prompted Democratic lawmakers to make an unexpected move, a sit-in on the House floor. When this House last convened, a number of us were willing to sit in in order to stand up. Among those who took over the chamber that night was Austin Representative Lloyd Doggett, who was actually a student here at UT during the 1966 shooting. I live just a few blocks from campus that uh, this tragedy was underway. What did you think when you found out the news? Well, it was shocking. Uh, we never had anything like that happen before. It was one of those but for the grace of God moments that uh, I guess all of us feel at some point, but uh, if he had been pointing his weapons more in my direction, I could have been one of the victims. And I think that's true of uh, hundreds of other people in the university area. I know that this changed so much about security and police presence here at UT. You were the student body president the year following that tragedy. How do you think that that shaped the direction of the campus? Well, it, uh, it did lead to some additional security here because it's uh, apparent that the campus and the Austin Police Department at that point weren't prepared for an incident of this type that had never been envisioned. Uh, and so having to borrow weapons from civilians to help do this, uh, so there, was, there definitely was an upgrade in security, but nothing like what we have now because tragically these have become incidents where if a week goes by and no one's shot uh, in violence with a gun, uh, that's almost an unusual week. Uh, then it was extraordinarily unusual. I think it was uh, viewed as an aberration of this is one uh, disturbed individual who caused so much pain, but not necessarily any recognition that it might reoccur soon and affect the country the way it does today. It was hard to ignore what the Democrats did on the House floor in Washington earlier this summer with the sit-in over gun control. Well, it was an extraordinary tactic. It's certainly something not to use regularly, 
but that we needed to do something to elevate this issue. The National Rifle Association, the gun lobby, has won the debate for the last several years completely by just getting this issue off the agenda. We're not discussing it, we're not acting on it, and with one act of gun violence after another, with so many people being killed on a daily basis from gun violence, we needed to raise the stakes, and we plan to keep this issue on the agenda until we get action. The campus carry bill that the Texas legislature passed is about to become law. Well, I think it's outrageous. We had uh, the chancellor, the president, uh, students through student government, the faculty, all saying, don't do this. It won't make it safer. And certainly it, in a stressful environment that is here on campus, uh, as young people adjust to this, uh, finals, all the pressures of being accepted as a young person, it just creates an environment where more guns means more danger and more risk. You know, coming up on the tower now, 50 years later. Well, I remember many good times around this mall, but that day and reflecting back on it, uh, just a horror that while we've got an anniversary, uh, the victims and their families they don't need an anniversary. They live with this every day. The loss, the pain, the hurt, sometimes the physical injury as a result of this. So we're here to honor them uh, and to remember ourselves. And on an anniversary like this, we ought to be acting so that we won't have others who are affected by the same kind of gun violence. I think we passed a piece of legislation that will hold up in courts, and I think the individuals that are fighting it are going to find that out. Ahead, we go one-on-one -on -one with one of the biggest supporters of Campus Carry in the legislature. How the law could play out next session, coming up in this special edition of State of Texas In-Depth. Our children off to college to bring back a degree in their hands not to bring them back in a body bag. For months, high tensions over guns on college campuses. If you guys do decide to go against this, I will walk until my feet bleed to make sure that you never are an elected official again. With input on and off campus. It doesn't pass what I call the common sense of good judgment law. The 2015 Texas legislature came to a close with the last minute vote making campus carry the law. The campus carry legislation easily passed through the state Senate, but members of the state House needed more convincing. Representative Alan Fletcher helped shepherd it through the House. He sat down with our Aaron Cargyle before this law takes effect. They had come to me as the only retired peace officer in the Texas legislature about carrying a bill for campus carry. Thought about it and evaluated what the circumstances were, did a little research into how many hundreds of thousands of men and women in Texas uh, RCHL licensed carriers. What a small percentage of that actually attend college after they're 21 years old and you know it'd be those like myself that went back to graduate school in their 40s. With a campus like UT in Austin with 40 to 50,000 people there were less than uh, 400 and something in the entire operation that had a CHL period. Did you expect it to still be controversial even up to this point right down to the wire of it going into effect? And not at all. To be honest I felt that it would be like all the other legislation in Texas that when you realize that the majority of the men and women in Texas wanted this, this law to pass, uh, when it passed by a majority in the Texas House and passed in the Senate and the governor signed it, I thought that that would be the end of it. Do you see any tweaks on down the line for, for other lawmakers mm -hmm. since you're not rerunning? No, I don't see that there's a, an issue. I mean, we made it pretty broad and I think that it's going to serve the purpose that, it, that I wanted it to serve. I would like to think that in the great state of Texas in the future, when some mentally disturbed person or some terrorist comes into a classroom and summarily starts assassinating students or the teacher, that some good old Texas boy or girl can stand up in the back of the class because they're legally carrying and put an end to it. The move to allow guns on campus comes as Texas lawmakers also loosen gun restrictions. Around the time they passed campus carry, lawmakers also legalized the open carry of handguns. They eliminated the charges for accidentally bringing a gun to the airport. Another bill made it illegal for city and county governments to ban guns in their buildings, though weapons still aren't allowed in courtrooms. Coming up, another deadly shooting at UT just a few years ago resurrected the campus carry debate in Texas. But before guns are allowed in classrooms here, we take a look at other states that passed the law long ago, their problems and success 
next on State of Texas In-Depth. Fall semester 2010, while students at the University of Texas studied for midterms in the library, we started hearing all this commotion, these screams, these yells. 19-year-old math major Colton Tooley, dressed all in black, came through the doors carrying an assault rifle. Had a suit on it looked like with some kind of headgear and it was an AK-47. Dashing through a set of security detectors, he headed to the sixth floor past dozens of people. I heard people start uh, screaming gun, gun, gun. Tooley never pointed his gun at anyone and in just a few short minutes, he took his own life. In the six years since Colton Tooney walked into this building, UT has worked to better educate its staff and students on the resources for mental health concerns here. In that time, state lawmakers have also worked to pass a law that many people believe will help protect students here on campus. Public universities must now allow guns into college classrooms, though systems can carve out gun-free zones. UT banned guns in dorm rooms, but not common areas. Professors must allow guns in their classrooms, but can ban them from a private office. Texas State University students can have guns in their dorms, as will Texas A&M students. Generally speaking, people cannot bring guns into any sports venues, some research labs, and medical clinics. Texas is not unique to the campus carry law. In fact, 10 other states have it. KXA investigator Kevin Schwaller shows us how Colorado implemented its version. University of Texas student Hannah Hines says she doesn't believe guns on campus will change much. Still, she worries some students might not feel comfortable if someone with an opposing opinion has a weapon. I am not particularly enthusiastic about it because I feel like it could limit you know, people's uh, freedom of speech. That was also a concern in Colorado, where the University of Colorado banned guns. But in 2012, the state Supreme Court ruled the ban was against state law. In that case, I filed an amicus brief on behalf of County Sheriff's of Colorado. David Copel says since then, there's been Colorado. one incident at a University of Colorado campus. Media reports indicate it involved a woman accidentally firing a weapon and causing a minor injury. Still, he remembers the fears opponents of carrying on campus had. You know, somebody's going to pull out a gun because they get so mad, and none of that stuff has come true. UT students with their licenses to carry will be allowed to have a concealed gun in areas like this. However, concealed firearms won't be allowed past the dorm room door. Same goes for the University of Colorado Boulder, where police have 24-hour weapons lockers for students. I um, now plan to carry just for my own safety. Hannah at UT says she plans to carry because of the Texas law. She doesn't trust her safety to others, and now she doesn't know who could have a gun. Kevin Schwaller, KXN Investigates. With just three months left until the presidential election, gun laws are already playing a role. Donald Trump told the National Rifle Association he wanted to get rid of gun-free zones. Hillary Clinton says she'll take on the gun lobby to push against background check loopholes. You can keep up with all of our campaign coverage ahead of the November election right here on KXAN News and KXAN.com. From all of us with KXAN's political team, thank you for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas In-Depth. Have a great day.